Hello everyone, welcome to second video of chapter 6. In this video, we start talking about an algorithm called Gomery's cutting plane algorithm to solve integer programming problem. So, um, we'll have to um, um, narrow down a little bit of the problem that we will be able to handle. So here we will consider something called pure integer programming problem. That is, I have a standard linear programming problem with the following. I have integer restriction on the variables, and I also have all the coefficients in the constraint on the right-hand side and in the objective function, and they are all integral, so they're all integers. So the main idea of this cutting plane algorithm, just like in words, but not into details, is the following. We will um, add new constraints one at a time. And eventually, so the goal is uh, eventually it will lead to an optimal solution with the uh, integral coordinates. Okay, so that's the main idea, and there are a lot of details we need to talk about. Okay, so here's kind of an overview of the algorithm. So step one, we solve the linear pro programming problem as before. And that is, we neglect the integral constraint. Pretend it's not there. And this gives us an optimal solution. If that solution happens to have integral coordinates, then we're really lucky, then we're done, we stop. Otherwise, if the optimal solution does not have um, integral coordinates, then we will add a new constraint. The new constraint will have the following property. First, the non-integral optimal solution that you obtained in the first step should uh, not satisfy the new constraint, meaning adding a new constraint will lead to a different optimal solution. Second, in the problem in part one, all integer feasible solutions of this old linear programming problem will remain feasible in the new LP problem with this additional constraint. So this basically means that the new constraint will kind of a cut off part of the feasible region, which does not contain an, in any integer feasible solution. Okay, sorry for the typo, it's any in here, integral feasible solution. How do you exactly do that? How do you cut off? We'll explain the details in an example. Okay, then you solve the new LP problem with the additional constraint. If the solution is integral, then stop, you're done. If not, then you repeat the previous steps as needed. Okay, let's take a look at an example. So here is our example. We want to minimize this function with the integral and variables and here are the two constraints okay so let's follow the algorithm so first step of the algorithm we solve it as a linear programming problem neglecting the integral constraint this we shall be familiar with we can go to lp assistant and set up the tableau and pivot so here it is. So this is the tableau. That's the initial tableau. And we add two um, slack variables and it becomes canonical. And then um, the coefficient here, one, negative three. Okay. And then we pivot, we pick this column because it's negative and we click four because it's positive. And then we get the second part of tableau and then we see that these are non-negative, which means mm, the optimal has been reached. Okay, so um, without the integer constraint, we know that the minimum here is um, 
11 and a quarter. The optimal solution is uh, x1 is 0, that's x2 from here, and x3, this guy, and x4 is 0. And we see that these solutions are not integral. Okay, so um, now here's step two. So now we see that we need to um, come up with a, a new constraint. So let's take a look at the final tableau from the LP assistant. And we see that both B1 and B2, they are not integers. So we, we need to pick one of them that's not integer since they both are non-integers, we could pick any of them. Let's say we randomly decide to pick the first row, this one here. So let's write out the equation represented by this row. So that means 2 over 3 x1, x2 is 0, plus x3, and a quarter x4 equals 23 over 4. Now we do a step, which is a little trick, which is actually very important. So in this above equation, we're going to separate all the coefficients into integer part and the fractional part. So 3 over 2 is 1 plus half, and that's half. And this number, 23 over 4, is 5 plus 3 over 4. Okay, so we write it out. Next step, I will rearrange terms here, keep all the fractional parts on the left and the integer parts to the right. So I'll keep a half x1 to the left and a quarter x4 to the left, and I move 3 to the fourth to the left. And on the right, I keep the 5, and then 1 times x1 is moved here and x3 is moved here. So I have this expression where the right-hand side contain the integral parts and the left with the fraction, okay? Okay, so the final equation from the previous page is repeated here. Let's make some discussion. A, part A. So this is a integer programming problem. If now all the xi's are integral, so that's a whole number, that's a whole number, then the final result of the right-hand side is integral. And if the left-hand side equal to that one, that means that the left-hand side should also be integral. Okay, now let's look at the left-hand side. It's this expression. So we know that these variables are non-negative, so this expression here is bigger than zero, which means the left-hand side shall be bigger than negative three over four. So this says that the smallest integer value the left-hand side can achieve would be zero. So we conclude the left-hand side has to be non-negative. So this gives us an idea for the new constraint. We introduce a new variable, x5, and let the left-hand side equal x5. And x5 is non-negative and integral. Okay, so this basically say this one equals x5. And then I can move the x5 to the left-hand side of the equation and move the constant term to the right-hand side. So I get this constraint. And now I can multiply this by negative 1 on both sides to get a positive 1 in front of x5, so this can become a basic variable, okay? And that's what I get by changing all the signs. Okay, so in the end, this is the constraint we will add to the problem. Okay, now we have a new LP problem with the added constraints and uh, 
it's uh, being repeated here. So um, this is the final tableau from the ALP assistant computation. And on that, we add a new constraint, which we discussed on the previous page, how this is obtained, okay, with a new variable. And now we can solve this again. Okay, so um, here we see that x3, x2, x5 are the basic variables. And the right-hand side, these two are positive, but I have a negative term here. So you should use the dual simplex algorithm to solve this. Okay, so here is the tableau. Um, I put in red color, that means the new um, variable you add, and also this here actually is the new constraint that you put in. So using the um, dual simplex algorithm, so we pick this row here, and then we have to decide which of these two columns to pick, and then we check the ratio. Okay, and then um, the bigger one is this guy, so we click on that and uh, you obtain the next tableau, which is listed here. So these are positive on the right hand side and all these are non-negative. So you have reached your optimal point. And then we see that all these values are integral and then we have solved the problem. So we conclude that the minimum of z is negative 9 from here, attained at um, 0, that's x1, x2 is 3, x4 is, uh, x, 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 x3 is 5, x4 is 3, and 0. Okay. If you want to go back to the original problem, which only contains x1 and x2, then you say that x1 is 0, x2 is 3, is the optimal solution with the optimal value at negative 9 for the z. Okay, so um, from the example that we did, just looking at the tableau and all that, um, it probably doesn't give us a very clear idea of what the algorithm is doing. It would be nicer to understand at least why this is called cutting plane. Okay, so now we go through a geometric explanation of uh, what happened there. So here is the problem. Um, we draw the picture, so um, x1, x2 here, and uh, the two constraints, the border, the boundary that here, and then the green is the um, feasible solution. I encourage you to work out the details to make sure I did this right. And then you find out that this vertex is the optimal point um, with 0 and 3.75. And then we see that this is not an integer. Okay, then let's revisit the constraint we add there. This was the constraint that's uh, equal to x5, which is bigger than 0. So we write that out. We now wish to express this constraint in terms of x1 and x2. That is, we need to get rid of x4. Now recall x4 was the slack variable we added and um, go to that tableau and we have that x4 is just the second constraint adding this as slack. So we can plug this x4 in in here and rewrite then we have this constraint. Take a closer look and then we see that um, negative 2 and 4, that get negative half x1, so this one actually cancels that one. And then um, negative 4 and 4, we get negative x2 here. And then 15 over 1, uh, 15 over 4, and um, 4 over 3, I can move this to the left-hand side and move the x2 to the right-hand side, which means I can solve this inequality. Okay, so you can easily verify that. Now I have a constraint that is x2 is less than 3. Now let's add this constraint onto the old one on the graph and see what it does. So 
this is the graph um, where this line x2 equals 3 is drawn and it should be less than that and that means this constraint now will restrict the feasible region into below this line so now it's this green one and you solve the linear programming problem over this feasible region and then you find the optimal solution at this new red dot zero three okay and that's what we found in the algorithm so we see that um the algorithm as we have designed here what it does actually is it cuts off a small triangular region cut it off and remove it from the feasible region and look at the part you remove this part you remove does not contain any feasible solutions that has integer coordinates, okay? So that's why the name, the cutting plane algorithm. Okay, so, um, so um, this is the first example and uh, hopefully um, we explain the algorithm. It's pretty, should be pretty clear what we did to get it and the uh, next video we will um, generalize it and formulate it into a general algorithm. So hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you next time.